Aircrafts move really fast because they have to. Nobody wants to be on a plane that's barely moving. It defies the whole point. For the next uh, 12 to 18 months, we'll enter the flight test program with the... But some aircrafts move faster than Sonic or Barry Allen. Some zip along at nature-defying speeds, and these are the fastest of the fast. These are the 20 fastest hypersonic aircrafts in the world. Number 20. The Lockheed Martin SR-71 Blackbird Back in the late 1950s and early 60s, Area 51 was the location of several special projects, one of which was the development of a stealth recon aircraft known as Archangel 12. Now, it was designed by Lockheed for the CIA and was destined to become the fastest plane in the world at the time, eventually being the blueprint for the SR-71 Blackbird. It was tested in Area 51 and was veiled in huge secrecy, which was particularly important given the fact that it was being built as a spy plane in the midst of some distinctly uncomfortable Cold War tensions. This was the daddy of the son of Blackbird, if you will, and it was the most advanced sort of plane that the world had ever seen, at that time anyways. It was one of the very first aircraft that was developed with a reduced radar cross-section, as in the beginnings of stealth technology, as well as that the plane was equipped with aerial recon for a selection of gear that included signals, intelligence sensors, a camera, side-looking airborne radar, and more. The Blackbird could operate at high altitudes and high speed, which meant that it was able to pretty much avoid, or at the very least, out race any kind of threat. Such was the superior speed and function of this aircraft that it could pretty much just run away from any missile that was tossed in its direction. The Blackbird retired in 1999, and its jobs have been assumed by various unmanned aerial vehicles and recon satellites. It is yet to be determined if the SR-72 will take its place. Number 19. The Quarter Horse Hermius Next up, we have the Quarter Horse by Hermius. This futuristic-looking concept is the creation of Hermius Corporation, a startup company based out of Georgia and the United States. And since 2019, they've had the main purpose of designing and building a hypersonic airliner. Currently, they're developing an aircraft that's planned to be able to fly at Mach 5 and have a range of 4,600 miles. It seems that Hermius already have managed to design and build an engine prototype that has been tested with some success at Mach 5. By August of 2020, they had received a lovely big chunk of change from the United States Air Force with the proposed idea that the Mach 5 aircraft will then enter the American presidential fleet and possibly be used as Air Force One in the future. The goal of this aircraft is to demonstrate what Camara's turbine-based combo cycle engines are capable of during flight and to also break the airspeed record that was set almost 50 years ago by the SR-71 Blackbird. So, watch out for this space, I guess. Number 18. The X-Core Lynx this next one is basically a spaceship, so that's kind of cool. This was a proposed rocket-powered space plane that was announced back in 2008, developed by California company Xcore Aerospace to enter the suborbital space flight market. That place is now clogged up with billionaires, and the intention behind this particular space plane was that it would be able to take one pilot, one ticket purchasing passenger, or a payload to the height of 100 kilometers altitude. Each ticket was planned to cost $95,000 in 2008, which would be more than $130,000 today. And the first flights were estimated to be in 2010. Over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, we'll enter the flight test program with the Lynx. Anyways, the thing doesn't seem to have gotten off the ground after all. The best that they managed to do was a full-scale model, and then the company announced that they had halted the development of their spaceship, and then shortly after that, x filed for bankruptcy and all the assets of the company were sold to non-profit for education instead of space flights. Number 17. The Boeing X-51 Wave Rider This unmanned cruiser is often called the Wave Rider due to its ability to ride its own shockwave, and not because it's some kind of hip California surfer bro with a tribal tattoo around his navel. I'll let you decide which one is better. Initially built by the Air Force, its purpose was to pave the way for the future of hypersonic weaponry, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. 
The craft was meant to be launched from a B-52 and then accelerated by a solid rocket booster which allowed it to reach speeds of up to Mach 4.5 before its scramjet kicks in. Its first supersonic flight took place in May of 2010, where it got up to Mach 5 for nearly 200 seconds. It ended up having way too many problems with tests and would eventually be scrapped after having only collected nine minutes worth of usable research data for the entirety of all of its test flights. More than likely, worth the absolute millions of dollars that was put into the project, I would say. Number 16. The Skyline A space plane that may have become the fastest hypersonic transport vessel ever? <laughs> I'll take two, please. Skylon is a privately funded space plane vehicle that's said to carry payloads of up to 33,000 pounds into orbit. Although nobody's really sure what it does because as of now, the only thing anyone has on the project is an artist's rendering and a whole bunch of words. The next phase of development involves actually constructing and test flying a fancy schmancy new engine known as the Sabre. But as of now, it's apparently such a monumental task and expensive that the manufacturers are actively seeking partners. Once completed, though, the makers say that this hypersonic space aircraft will transform space access and exploration, 40 passengers at a time. Will you be one of them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box down below. Number 15. The Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept This is the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept, or HAWC, which they actually say as Hawk. It's a hypersonic air-launched cruise missile project, so that's a fun one. But anyways, this thing is apparently in development at the United States Defense Advanced Research's Projects Agency, or DARPA. It's being created without an explosive warhead, but that's because it doesn't really need one. It is a kinetic energy weapon. As if the existing weaponry wasn't worrying enough, there is a hypothetical idea of something which is known as kinetic bombardment, or kinetic orbital strike, which is where the orbit is used to sling a whole bunch of kinetic energy weapons at the surface of a planet. The energy that the kinetic projectile uses comes entirely from the kinetic process rather than any kind of explosive material. Well, that's fun now, isn't it? This project began its life in the midst of the Cold War, you know, when the leaders of the world were all hell-bent on slinging stuff at each other from outer space and they really didn't seem overly concerned if they happened to kill us all dead in the process. So, as if we didn't have enough to worry about, this thing has been tested and the missile can now be propelled by the scramjet at a speed of greater than Mach 5, which is approximately 3,300 miles per hour. Awesome. Number 14. The Lockheed Martin SR-72 Here we have a top-secret aircraft, which is less top-secret than it seems. Like all of these things, they are often more effective if your enemies actually know that you have them. This is the Lockheed Martin SR-72, which also goes by the name Son of Blackbird. This is an American aircraft concept which is in development with the aim of being used for reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and surveillance. You know, spy plane type stuff. It is the proposed replacement for the retired SR-71 Blackbird, hence its more cute moniker. The test vehicle for this aircraft is scheduled to take flight in 2025. At the core of the plane's unique specifications is its hypersonic abilities. Whether it's to be manned or unmanned, there are no other spy planes that are currently able to operate at these kind of speeds. The son of Blackbird breaks the mold when it comes to ambition, and it would mark a major transition to the new era of hypersonic flight. It is amazing, but also, if you think about it for too long, it's kind of deeply terrifying. Number 13. Hypersonic Technology Demonstrator Vehicle Now we have an unmanned scramjet demo aircraft that's used for hypersonic flight that's being developed to carry hypersonic and long-range cruise missiles. Apparently, it can also do other stuff besides death and destruction. It has civilian use, like launching small satellites for a budget price, you know, that sort of thing. So this machine is being developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization in India, primarily for use by the Indian Armed Forces. They say that the target speed is Mach 6, but frankly, that seems a rather silly and unnecessary fast speed. I mean, what could you possibly even need that for? Can't we all just calm down a bit now? Number 12. North American X-15 Next up, we have an offering from NASA. 
that is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and the United States Air Force. So you know that this thing is the real deal, and it is very serious indeed. The North American X-15 is a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft that is part of the X-Plane series of weird and wonderful experimental aircraft. In the 1960s, the X-15 set all kinds of crazy records for speed and altitude, and it was even sent to the edge of outer space and brought back a whole bunch of useful data that was then totally invaluable in the development of aircraft and spacecraft over the years. It could reach a top speed of 4,520 miles per hour and reach and travel Mach 6.7. It was the highest speed ever recorded for a crewed powered aircraft, and that remains true to this day. Perhaps it is still like that because it's not really good for people to travel at such speeds. And frankly, all that space conquering of the 1960s got just a little bit out of control. But who could possibly say? Number 11. Shoria. Ah, great, another terrifying and insanely fast missile. That's just what we all need. This is Shoria, which apparently means bravery, and it's a canister-launched hypersonic surface-to-surface -surface tactical missile that is in development for use by the Indian Armed Forces. They seem real eager to get all the scary hypersonic weapons that they can lay their research on now, don't they? Anyways, this thing can travel at a range of up to 1,180 miles per hour. And guess what? It's massive. A 2,200-pound payload limit can carry either conventional or nuclear weapons. Brilliant! More warheads and more destruction. Just awesome. It's perfect and ideal. Why wouldn't you want every place in the world to have a bazillion huge warheads that can strike from really, really far away? Almost anywhere in the world. Number 10. The BrahMos-2 Yes, and as if all that insanely fast and far-reaching, deadly world-ending stuff was not enough for you, well, here's another one. This one belongs to both India and Russia, who have apparently been working together to develop it. How sweet! It's apparently going to have a range of 930 miles and be able to travel at an eye-bleeding Mach 8. The cruise part of the flight is going to include a scramjet air breather, just like others that we have seen before. Despite its potential distance-busting capabilities, they reckon that the BrahMos-2 will be limited to traveling 190 miles. This is because Russia is part of an international agreement that says that they will not help another country to develop missiles that can go further than that. So we'll all probably be just fine then, right? Number 9. The 3M22 Zircon now seriously, if I have to learn any more about missiles and weapons proliferation and all the actual deadly junk that's being pointed everywhere in the world right now, I may just never sleep again. This is yet another hypersonic missile, and it belongs to Russia. The 3M22 Zircon is a scramjet-powered hypersonic cruise missile with thermonuclear capabilities. Great, that's just what I wanted to hear. This is apparently a development of a project known as the Hypersonic Experimental Flying Vehicle, or HELA, that was created back along. There are dozens of these things parked all over the place. They've been put on ships, on mobile ground vehicles, and really anywhere else that's slightly mad and extremely aggressive and has nuclear power that might put a bunch of very fast and deadly hypersonic missiles in the air. So let's just not try to dwell on all that, shall we? Number 8. The NASA X-43 This next one was a NASA experiment. The thing was an unmanned hypersonic aircraft that was planned to have multiple scale variations that were to be used to test hypersonic flight. Part of that mysterious X-plane series, the X-43 was included in the HyperX program in the late 90s. This machine set a bunch of records for airspeed stuff and is regarded as being the fastest jet-powered aircraft on record on the account of its top speed of Mach 9.6. Great! The first planes in these tests were single-use, meaning that they would cost millions to make, and then after they were set up just once to go really fast in the sky, they were deliberately trashed and never used again. The plans for these aircraft were somewhat unceremoniously scrapped, and no plans to make any more have ever been announced. Ah, well, never mind. Number 7. DFZF There were a lot of memorable events in the year of 2015. 
the Syrian refugee crisis, the FIFA scandal, the attacks on Charlie Hebdo's offices in France, Cuba and the United States kissed and made up, but some of the more lesser-known or remembered events like Cuba becoming the first country in the world to successfully eliminate mother-to-child transmission of HIV and syphilis. Another event that's been long forgotten was the launching of the DFZF aircraft by China. 2015 would be the year that the People's Republic of China had successfully conducted a series of flight tests of its DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle. But vehicle's not really the appropriate word for us lay people to use, because in reality, it's an ultra-high-speed missile that's said to be capable of penetrating U.S. air defense systems designed around interceptor defense. The missile was tracked by U.S. intelligence agencies, flying at speeds that went well beyond Mach 5, but it's said that once it reaches full height and goes into its glide mode, that it can actually reach a speed of Mach 10. This is where even at those absurd speeds, it can still perform evasive actions and make it a lot more difficult to take down. Back then, it was said that this could end up being a fully functional instrument of aerial death bringing, but it's now 2024 and nothing else is known about the project. It was more likely that some of the timely posturing by China in the face of all the other conflicts that were taking place at the time, kind of like that older guy who sits outside your house revving the engine on his old 97 Ford Mustang while trying to impress your sister, but she's too busy making TikToks for her eight followers, one of them which is him, to even care about what he's actually doing. In light of everything else that happened that year, the United States likely just yawned and went back to listening to Drake and secretly going into Fifty Shades of Grey screenings with their wives in disguise. Number 6. The Sharp Edge Flight Experiment Known as Chefex, this isn't so much an aircraft as it is an application to make other aircraft better. Kind of like how when you stare at the wall and wonder what color would better suit it, or if that rude picture that you took of your wife would be suitable to hang there in a frame. You're not changing the wall so much as you are simply enhancing it to make it more appealing and better. Chefix was one such kind of technology. Developed by some scientific minds in Germany, it was an experimental tech aimed at improving all sorts of things in already existing aircraft and all types and sizes. And so an experimental aircraft was created in order to test its boundaries. Chefix 1 was the initial vehicle of the project, and during its first tests, it reached an altitude of approximately 200 kilometers, and within 20 seconds, re-entered and made re-entry at nearly seven times the speed of sound. The parachute system failed, and the vehicle was obliterated when it hit the ground. Subsequent versions and tests proved to be valuable for researchers, and the second incarnation of the craft was even faster and as of right now, there are plans to make a third and fourth version for future scientific exploration and research. Number 5. The Lockheed X-17 And now on to things that no longer exist. Here we have something that had a whole lot of potential in the beginning, but ended up being placed on the shelf in the end with those as-seen-on-TV gimmicks that you bought and your grandmother's collection of Russian nesting dolls. The Lockheed X-17 was developed during the mid-20th century by Lockheed Martin Corporation as a high-altitude research rocket designed with the primary objective of gathering all kinds of scientific gubbins without the exiting and re-entering of aircraft up in the atmosphere. Equipped with solid-fuel rocket motors, it was capable of reaching extreme altitudes and speeds, which really came in handy in making contributions to the advancement of intercontinental ballistic missiles. While X-17 may no longer be in active service, it's remembered by many as being a breakthrough when it came to aerospace research and experimentation. And subsequent generations of engineers and scientists have benefited from the service that it was able to provide while it was around. Number 4. Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2 Experiments are being conducted all the time in labs and warehouses, even bedroom closets all over the world and every day. Someone's discovering something about technology, the planet, and that girl that sits three desks behind you in geometry class. The Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2 is an experimental aircraft designed to travel at incredibly high speeds within the Earth's atmosphere. Developed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA, 
It's part of ongoing research that involves hypersonic technology for military use. At reported speeds of around 15,000 miles per hour, this thing is said to be capable of crossing the continental United States in just under 30 minutes. I mean, really? It's going to take that long? The continental United States is only about 3,000 miles. Some things just don't make sense. This great piece of tech is said to include advanced thermal protection systems and control surfaces that enable it to withstand the intense heat generated during hypersonic flight. Which is good, considering that that's what it's made for. Even though it may seem like some kind of amazing breakthrough in aviation, it's not come without some problems. In 2010, during its second test flight, the vehicle experienced what was simply referred to as an anomaly and was lost over the Pacific Ocean. But let's be honest here, we all know that it was aliens, don't we? With challenges remaining and aliens existing, it continued research and development efforts were ongoing in hopes of a future where hypersonic technology will be put to use in military defense and other applications that it might be good for. Though I'm not really sure the human body can withstand Mach 20, so what those applications will be, I mean, who can really say? Number 3. The LGM-30 Minuteman When someone earns the nickname Minuteman, it can mean a lot of things. Perhaps he's a handyman who gets there quickly and does that job efficiently. Perhaps he's quick on the draw at performing a certain task. And maybe, he's that guy you had your first adult experience with and was left really disappointed by. While in the realm of warfare, Minuteman is a name that puts people on edge. This intercontinental ballistic missile system employs missiles to safeguard against attacks. These things are so important to the defense of the country that their communication systems ensure the President and Secretary of Defense have nearly instantaneous contact with each launch crew should the need arise. The Minuteman weapon system was conceived in the late 1950s, with the first one being deployed in the early 1960s, and over the years it's undergone upgrades and changes which has resulted in new versions of the missile. Currently, the Minuteman force comprises 500 Minuteman III missiles located at a handful of different Air Force bases all across the country. Number 2. The Hwasong-18 who really knows what's happening in North Korea these days, outside of Dennis Rodman? The country is shrouded in such secrecy when it comes to their military arsenal that we're going to have to take this next one with a grain of salt and optimism. Here, we have what's apparently a ballistic missile that's been developed by North Korea. It's widely believed to be one of the largest intercontinental ballistic missiles in the world, and while details are of course limited due to the secretive nature of North Korea's raging megalomaniacal dictator, some scarce bits of information do exist. In October of 2021, during a military parade in Pyongyang, the missile was put on full display, as is the usual for parades of these sorts. It's estimated to be around 30 meters long, which would classify it as one of the largest missiles ever put on display by North Korea, and also suggests that it's designed to carry a heavy payload over a long distance, potentially making it capable of delivering a nuclear warhead to targets thousands of kilometers away. Experts who have examined it from afar say that it probably uses solid fuel propulsion, making it able to be launched more quickly and with less preparation. But it also makes it much more difficult to detect and intercept. It's believed to be a two-stage missile, meaning that it is equipped with multiple rocket motors that ignite in a sequence in order to get its great big ass into space. And of course, because of this, the United Nations and powers that be have imposed a lot of sanctions on North Korea in regards to what they can only speculate about. Kind of like your parents grounding you because they know that you did something but don't really know the full extent. However, you still have a window, and your dad is a heavy sleeper, so you'll just sneak out and play mailbox baseball anyways. So who's to say that a mentally unstable dictator with his finger on the button of the biggest flying death apparatus and a control on his nation's borders that's tighter than a dolphin's bumhole won't fire the thing anyways? Number 1. Avant-Garde Russia has been fascinated with flight for many decades now, with the Great Space Race being a prime example of that. And of course, with a nation that is so embroiled in a drop-of-the-dime wartime bloodlust, it should not be a surprise that they've also dipped their hammers and sickles into other areas of aviation as well. 
The avant-garde has been making waves in military circles and getting everyone's knickers in a twist with excitement. Developed as part of Russia's efforts to modernize its military arsenal, it's designed to deliver nuclear payloads with unprecedented speed and precision. Unlike traditional ballistic missiles, which by this day and age are rather boring and easy to shoot down, the avant-garde's hypersonic capabilities allow it to maneuver at speeds that exceed Mach 20, which is just over 15,000 miles per hour and you will in no way whatsoever be able to see it barreling at you when it blows you to kingdom come. The concept of hypersonic vehicles has been around for decades, but recent advancements in tech have finally made them a reality. The avant-garde is just another step forward in Russia and Vladimir Putin's lust to control the world and be the dominant military power. Critics and scientists and other nerds and lab coats are all arguing that something like this is actually bad, not because of its potential of its nuclear capability, but because of the newness of the technology, along with the speeds at which it operates, making it highly unstable and unpredictable. But that's exactly what you want when your dictator's riding around on bears without his shirt on, pressing the big red button and trying to overtake areas that don't belong to him at a whim whenever someone disrespects him, you know? Well, that's all from the extremely terrifying world of insanely fast aircraft. I can't really say that I feel better for knowing about all of that, but how about you? Which of these aircraft did you find the most interesting, and which ones are going to be keeping you up at night? Go ahead and tell me all about it in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.